hey guys welcome back to my channel so in this tutorial i'm going to be drawing a fish using colored pencils and markers as a base so if you do want to see the real-time version of this and follow along with me every step of the way then i've got the voiceover tutorials available on my patreon as well as so many other tutorial series so for just five dollars a month you get access to free new tutorial series every single month as well as all of the other five dollar tutorial series from previous months and for nine dollars a month you get a fourth tutorial series as well as well as all of the other tutorial series from the past and also you get to submit one piece of artwork every month for critique so I've got lots of tutorial series for drawing animals drawing portraits in color pencil markers graphite pencil watercolors so I've got so many over there so if you do want to improve your drawings then I really recommend checking that out and joining me over there but anyway guys let's get into the tutorial so the first thing that I'm doing is I am creating a marker base and I do this because I find that using markers under coloured pencil really quickens up the process of the drawing because you've already got a foundation base down for the drawing so you don't have to worry about using your coloured pencils to fill in every single bit of white grain on the paper so it's just a really quick way of blocking in all of the basic colours and just getting all of the blocked shapes and colours down on the drawing and then you can just refine and add details with the coloured pencils over the top. And the coloured pencils do go on top of the markers extremely well, they show up really, really well. So I just added some blues in for the water in the background. As you can see, I haven't added a lot of detail, I'm just blocking in the basic shapes. That's all the markers are there to do. They're not going to look particularly pretty once you've added it all in. It's going to look a bit messy and that's completely fine. It's just to get in a foundation base layer. So I added a few different shades of blue for the background and the water just to get in some of those shadows and I left some areas with just a lighter blue to give the idea of where the highlights are. And now I'm getting in all of the basic colours for the fish. There was really just the same sort of blues as I used for the water on the fish but I also added in some purples as well because on the reference it had a bit more of a purple tinge to where the highlights were. But as you can see I'm not adding lots of detail, I'm just blocking in those colours. I added did black for the stripes and I also went over it with a bit of blue and a bit of purple so it didn't look flat just to add a bit more colour to it and tone just to make it look a bit more sort of vibrant and not just black and I'm also adding some light shades to the tail as well. It doesn't matter if you go a bit too dark with the markers because you can add colour pencils over the top to lighten them up. And now I'm going on to the coral. There was a lot of coral in this reference photo. The reference photo and a sketch outline is also available on my Patreon as well. So the coral was very much out of focus compared to the fish. The fish was very much the focal point of the reference. It really stood out and then the coral and the background was more soft. It was slightly blurred. So I'm not worrying too much about getting all of the edges really crisp. I'm allowing some of the colours to blend and blur into each other so that there's those softer transitions positions. So I'm just blocking in all of the main colours for the coral. A lot of the time I had to mix and overlap different colours in order to get the colour that I wanted. You might not necessarily find one perfect colour to do what colour you want to do. You might have to mix colours and if you need to do that then I do recommend testing them out on a scrap piece of paper first. Overlap the colours that you want to add to see if it works and it gets the result that you want before you apply it to your drawing. But as you can see the coral looks very messy. You can't even really tell that it's coral at the moment but that's okay the colors are down everywhere is filled in and we can go and add more detail with the colored pencils and really define everything so I just added a bit of blue for that patch of water that's also between these coral and now I'm moving on to the coral on the right hand side. So the kind of process that I like to do when I'm colouring this in is that I like to add the shadows first. So the darkest parts of whatever section of coral that I'm doing. So in this case it was very purple underneath where it's more shadowed. And then I add a base tone down across the whole of the highlighted areas over the whole shadowed areas. And then I just add a few other colours to pull out some of the shadows to add some little details and markings. And kind of blend it all together. I like to transition those darker shadows into those highlights because even though I'm blocking in the colours I do still want to give it a smooth look I want to 
give myself an easier job so that when I do the colour pencils I don't have to just go over it and fix all of the colours again. So you'll see that when I finish this marker stage there is a massive difference between how it looks when I've finished the marker stage to what it looks like when it's finished the final result. There's a massive difference. So really don't worry too much about it looking perfect for this marker stage. It's just about getting in those basic colours and that should be quite easy to do if you've got an accurate sketch. So make sure you spend that extra time getting your sketch really accurate including all of the things that you need so you might not just want to include the outlines of the coral you might want to include outlines of like where the main shadows are the main highlights so that when you go into adding your colors and shading you know where the shadows and highlights are so now I'm just adding a bit more depth and a bit more shadow to those darker areas. I really want to try and make it look as good as I can with the markers so that I don't have to adjust as much with the coloured pencils in terms of colours but I'm definitely not worrying about it looking crisp and it's definitely not perfect. Like I said, there's a lot that I need to change. So now let's move on to the colour pencil stage. Before you add colour pencil, make sure that your markers are completely dry. And so for the eyes, I just added the white and the black to really hype up those highlights and darken up those shadows. And I'm going in with the white to pull out all of the highlights and establish where all of the highlights are first. Then I've just got a few different coloured pencils. I'm using my Prismacolors for a change for this drawing. And so I've just got a few blues and dark blues and some purples. And I'm just overlapping them to get a smoother look. And I really wanted it to look smooth. Once you've done the markers, it can look a bit sort of blocked. All the colours are very blocked. It's not a smooth, continuous transition of colour. So I just wanted to tweak that with the coloured pencils. And for the fish, I did basically go over the whole area with coloured pencils at some point. And I just worked on softly transitioning those colours colours. The highlights weren't really that bright so they were more subtle so I tried not to make them too harsh, too bright otherwise it would just look too artificial and too fake so I'm just creating those lilac -y, subtle highlights and mainly there was just a very much blue tone over the whole of this fish. The important things to look at when you're drawing the fish and to get it looking realistic is look at the texture. This one was quite smooth, there was only a few little markings around the eye in that but the majority of it was just quite smooth plain colours and also look at where those shadows and those highlights are. Look at why those shadows and highlights are where they are and it's really important to the anatomy and structure of the fish. You've really got to get those shadows and highlights the right sort of shape, the right sort of size in order for it to look realistic and for it not to look weird. Otherwise if you completely change the shape of the shadow or completely change where it is then it won't really look right and the fish might not look realistic. So those shadows and highlights are so important in making it look realistic so definitely don't overlook them definitely include them and also look at the fish look at where the fins are look at the markings of the fish if you're drawing a specific like species of fish then it's really important to pay attention to the shape of the fins to the markings the colors because those things are probably important in making that fish that certain species. So definitely look at those unique markings on the fish. Like there was lots of these little circles around the eye. So I really wanted to get them in and get them in the right place. So now I'm going to move on to adding all of the markings around the eye. So to do this I used the black polychromos pencil first to just really lightly block them in and then once I blocked them in I went in with things like the blues and the purples just to add the right colour to them, get them looking like they're part of the fish rather than just like plonked and coloured on top. They need to look like they're actually on the fish and part of the fish. So look at the highlights and the shadows on those markings as well. So now that I've done the fish and I made sure everything looked really smooth, I'm moving on to the water. So there was like this pipe or coral. I'm still not sure what it was in the reference photo, that like really dark blue bit in the background. But anyway, I worked on the shadows and there was a few highlights on that. And then I just added a few blues and darker blues on the water just to really make those shadows stand out there was this kind of darker stripe as you can see that shadow stripe also continues down to the fish as well so that's another thing why it's important to look at the shadows because it was the water and the shadows on the water that was influencing some of the shadows on the fish so that's important to look at 
But I didn't really have to change much to the water because the markers had already got most of the general colour blocked in and I didn't really have to add much. I just added a lighter blue for the actual highlights. But I didn't really do much to the water. But now I'm moving on to the coral. And again, I'm just following the colours that I put down. The colours are right. So just use those colours to judge what coloured pencils you're using. But the only difference is, is I'm really softening everything out, making those smooth transitions. Because the coral was out of focus, I really wanted to blur those colours into each other a bit more and I'm just using these coloured pencils to crispen up some edges and just give a more realistic look. I'm not necessarily changing where all the colours are or anything like that. The colours are right, the structures and the shape of all the coral is right. I'm just really fixing it and making it look more realistic by making it look a lot smoother so some of the edges are nice and smooth and soft transitions and then the edges that need to be crisp I make a bit more defined so I'm really just kind of taking everything to the next level and really focusing on each little area and just rendering it to look better and better but really it's just about fixing things I'm adding more highlights to those really light areas and it's just about spending a bit of extra time really just making it look as good as it can do and I think that's where everybody kind of falls down is that they do kind of get it to a decent stage but they don't spend those extra hours really elevating it to look amazing whereas a lot of people could probably get to that marker stage how it looks in that stage but then people don't really know how to make it look even better and people just finish it a bit too early when they could do so much more to make it look even better. So now I'm repeating the same process on the left hand side with that coral. So really just smoothing everything out. One thing that I'm using that was very useful in this drawing was the Caran Dash Colourless sort of blender stick. And this was really good at once I added all that coloured pencil, if I wanted to get that blurred look, I just used this colourless blender and I blended over the whole thing. And it really did work at softening everything out. But because you are smudging the colour, some of the really highlighted areas got a bit too sort of dirty a bit too much color on them so then I had to go back in with the white pencil and just brighten up those areas but it was so good at just really blurring and getting that out of focus look so if you can get your hands on one of them then I think they are a really good tool to have as well by the way guys all of the materials that I am using are linked in the description as well if you want to check them out and see where I got them so now I'm just working on that shadowed area as you can see I added some little highlighted bits of coral within the shadowed area because on the reference there was little highlighted highlighted sort of dots within that shadowed area but I will go over them to darken them up to make them sort of not so bright and not stand out as much but now I'm adding some more highlights onto the coral on the left hand side there was a lot of highlighted areas and really it was just very much like dots and circles so some advice that I'd have for you guys when you're drawing coral is to not really focus on trying to make it look like coral because really it's just a series of really random shapes so just follow the reference photo I really recommend using a reference photo if you're trying to do the realism as I always say but just follow the shapes follow the colors don't really overthink what you're drawing because once you've done it all it will all come together but like if you looked at a certain section of this drawing it wouldn't necessarily look like coral because I've done it all and you can see it all in the context of the whole drawing then it does look like coral and also because it's more blurred out and it's a lot more out of focus it's also harder to identify it as coral as well but just follow the reference photo follow the shapes and follow the colors and don't try and think too much about the fact that you're drawing coral and to get it to look like coral it's very similar like when you're drawing flowers and the petals might just be these random shapes you've just got to approach it like you are just drawing random shapes and look at the shapes and the sizes and the colors that you've got to draw so the very last thing that I went in and I did was I used the brush and pencil titanium white powder and touch up texture liquid and I used this to create some highlights. So this is archival for colour pencil, it's basically like you're adding a paint on top but it is for colour pencil and it is archival so it's really good to use and it just means that you can add highlights over the, any part of the colour pencil drawing. Even if it's over the darkest areas it will show up and you can also get more transparent looks with this or... You can also get more opaque looks with this depending on how much powder you add so you can get some brighter highlights or just lighten up areas slightly and a really great thing about this is that once it's dry you can go over it with colour pencil so if you don't like something then you can cover it up. 
So that's basically a quick summary of how I did this drawing. Remember, I've got the real time full process over on Patreon. So there's a link at the end if you want to check that out. If you're new to my channel and you want to see more tutorials, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.